from Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with a special guest, Fred Allen. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Now, on our show tonight, we, um, oh, in, in case you're wondering about these, you know, my uh, producer insisted that I wear glasses when I first come out, because he said it wouldn't hurt if people thought I was Mr. Peepers. <laughs> And he, uh, he had another uh, idea, too, about my uh, standing. Uh, he made this suggestion, you know, that I stand in the center of the stage, you see, and then sometime during the performance, a big two-ton uh, block of cement fall, should fall down and hit me on the head. See? He felt that this would appeal to the people who watched, you asked for it. <laughs> thousands of requests, you know. <laughs> but on my show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, my guest star is Fred Allen. And a lot of people think, of course, because of this feud that's been going on for so many years, that Fred and I are enemies, that we hate each other. And this isn't true at all, because Fred Allen and I are the, the best of friends. <laughs> overdoing it, you know what I mean, just a little bit. I, I wouldn't say that we were the best of friends, you know, I would just say that we, uh, let's say that we're friends, you know, just friends. <laughs> or friends might not be the exact word that I'm trying to say. What, what I mean is that we're more, uh, more, uh, well, I don't know, maybe we do hate each other. <laughs> I know I can't stand him. <laughs> you know, I remember a few years ago, I must tell you this, when Fred Allen first came out here to Los Angeles, to Hollywood, to make a picture, you see. He made a picture called It's in the Bag. And the producer of this picture wanted me to play a small part in it for nothing. You know, I didn't get paid or anything. And he, um, he talked me into it by telling me that this picture would be made in Technicolor. So I was kind of anxious to see how I'd look, you know, my eyes and everything. And, uh, <laughs> he, um, so he told me uh, that this would be made in Technicolor, but the minute we started to shoot the picture, we found out that we couldn't do it in Technicolor at all. They had to make it in black and white because due to a peculiar pigment in Fred Allen's skin, he photographs Argyle. <laughs> twice in the dressing room, I put my foot in his mouth. <laughs> but what a character that Fred, what a face on Fred Allen. With those bags under his eyes, he looks like a short butcher peeping over two pounds of liver. <laughs> but anyway, uh, tonight, after our uh, ra uh, television show, the one we're doing now, I'm flying to San Francisco because I'm opening tomorrow night at the Kern Theater for three weeks. I'm playing a theater for three weeks. And the reason I'm so excited is because this, you know, the very first time I ever appeared in public was in San Francisco. I remember I played <laughs> my violin, you see. And this was, oh, years ago. I, I, I forget just where, I know it was right in the shopping center of San Francisco. I think it was on the corner of, of Market and Taylor then. I understand there's a theater there now. <laughs> but anyway, when okay, I was Mr. playing Benny, that's enough the violin at this time. Raleigh, Bill, will you bring the boom in a little closer so we can get the extra scenery right behind you? Good. What is it? What's that's the trouble? Fine. I mean, what, what's wrong? Oh, you won't have to go over your monologue anymore. That's fine, Mr. Benny. The length's just right. Excuse me a minute. Fellas, will you cut the house lights in back, please? <laughs> well, look, 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 I mean, it, you mean I, I don't have to rehearse any longer? No. Well, if I, well, if I don't have to rehearse the monologue, maybe I can rehearse the, uh, the sketch that I'm to do with Fred Allen. Oh, no, no, we can't go over that either because Mr. Allen hasn't arrived for rehearsal. How do you like that? I, 
I give a guy a job because I'm sorry for him. I pay his bus fare all the way to New York. But he doesn't show up at rehearsal. Well, as long as we stop, we might as well break for lunch. Lunch, everybody. Lunch. Break for lunch. Lunch, lunch, everybody. Rochester, we're breaking for lunch. <laughs> How's everything? You got oh, everything? Just fine, just fine. fine. What do you have, boy? No, wait on the customers first. Oh, then. Yes. <laughs> ham and cheese. Yes, ham and cheese, ham yes. Cheese. They're very, very yeah, good. That's it. See if the orchestra wants something, too. <laughs> um, Remley, you want a sandwich? And... <laughs> 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 well, don't forget to change. No. There you are. <laughs> Look, Rochester, sir. Look, I want to ask you something. Why, why do you put so much ketchup on the sandwich? Well, that was an idea of mine to drum up more business. Well, how would ketchup give us more business? Well, I figured if some of it dripped on their shirts, we might get to do their laundry, too. <laughs> <laughs> Of that. <laughs> that's oh, that's, that's a Benny. good idea. Uh, yeah. Ham or cheese? Huh? I had my lunch, thank oh. you. I just wanted to tell you that as long as Mr. Allen isn't These are here, good. not no. spicy oh, enough. That's it, that's it. As long as Mr. Allen isn't here, we might as well skip the dialogue rehearsal, and we've got a lot of work to do with the lights anyway, so we won't need you for probably two hours. About two hours. Huh? <laughs> Rochester, look at I had an appointment with my sponsor at four o'clock. Now we're breaking for two hours. I, I, I'll, I'll be late for the... Well, boss, if you, if you don't have to do anything for two hours, why don't you go see your sponsor now? Hey, maybe I'll do that. You know, this is the day that he picks up my, my option for next year. Picks you know? up your option? It's nothing to worry about, Rochester. You know, it's just a formality, that's all. You know, he just wants to be sure that he's got me. You know, oh, <laughs> you, know? Oh. <laughs> you know, for next year, that's oh. all. So I'll run along and see him. You sell all the sandwiches and uh -huh. everything, huh? Okay. Don't forget. Oh, by the way, Rochester, while you're selling the sandwich, give him a sort of a floor show. You know what I mean? Sing and dance or something. And that way we can get the cover charge, too, you know. For the <laughs> <laughs> Roast beef, ham, cheese, Mr. Bass, special noodle soup. Oh, we ain't got a bell of money. Maybe ragged and funny, but we got a lot of things along. Side to side. Oh, we don't know what's coming tomorrow. Maybe trouble and sorrow, but we'll travel around sharing alone. Side to side. In all sorts of weather, maybe the sky will fall. Long as we're together, doesn't matter at all. We'll be back when we started. We'll travel along. Side with side. In all sorts of weather. Don't matter at all. The American Tobacco Company. I'm sorry, but Mr. Lewis can't be disturbed right now. However, I'd be very happy to take a message. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, sir. I'll see that he gets it. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is... <laughs> Mr. Lewis's office. Oh, yes, he asked me to take the information. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, I've got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is... Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Lewis's office. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think so. Well, it seems that Mr. Lewis is... Just a moment, please. Hello? Uh, my name is Jack Benny. I'd like to speak to Mr. Lewis, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but Mr. Lewis can't be disturbed right now. Can he call you back? Call me back? Yes. Are you at home or in Palm Springs? I'm in Stockholm. <laughs> Smorgasbord 8321. <laughs> Look, miss, I've been trying... Oh, oh, Mr. Benny, I'm terribly sorry. All right. Uh, I, I have an appointment with Mr. Lewis. Uh, could I see him? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but Mr. Lewis has someone in his office right now. He left orders not to be disturbed. Do you mind waiting? No, no, no. Not at all. Yes. May I have Mr. Lewis call you back, please? Thank you. See, Mr. Lewis is uh, picking up my option today. That's nice. <laughs> you know, I've been with the American Tobacco Company now for 10 years, and they're very, very happy with me, you know. That's nice. <laughs> then why shouldn't they be? You see, I'm, uh, I'm acknowledged to be one of the greatest comedians. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I hope he doesn't keep me waiting too long. I don't want to miss my rehearsal. As I was saying, Mr. Lewis, I was saying, Mr. Lewis, it isn't that I want Mr. Benny's job, you understand. It's just that the time has come to have you put him out to pasture. <laughs> put him out to pasture? Yes. For 30 years, Benny has been milking the same jokes to an audience that is not contented. <laughs> now, think it over, Mr. Lewis. Well, I don't know. Taking a man like Jack Benny and putting him out to pasture, uh, do you think it'll work? Why, of course. Look. If Benny can spend the last years of his life around anything green, he'll go for it. <laughs> take my advice, Mr. Lewis. Let him go. I'll take the show over and finish the season for you. But I, I can't let Jack go like that. Besides, we've given him a contract. Mr. Lewis, you are a shrewd businessman, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> I know that somewhere nestled down in that legal document, that there must be a tobacco picking clause. <laughs> Mr. Allen, why don't you sit down? Sit down? Have you ever ridden 3,200 miles on a bus? <laughs> if the sun feels like I do right now, it will never set again. <laughs> well, try that chair. It's very comfortable. <laughs> No, before I'd make a change, I'd have to be sure it was one for the better. Now tell me, have you any television experience? Nobody has. <laughs> Even the voice of experience has no television experience. <laughs> but I have studied the, me uh, the medium thoroughly, Mr. Lewis, and I see television as a small screen, and every performer must confine himself to a, uh, to a small area in, that, in the screen, you understand? And I've been training for that. I am ready for television because I have been rehearsing inside of a Bendix washing machine. <laughs> Inside a Bendix washing machine? Yes, sir. And to make a popular slogan even more popular, now the tide's in, let's let Benny out. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Allen, uh, may I ask you a personal question? Why, of course. You see, I, I've seen you on an occasional guest appearance. Yes. Now, does that give you enough money to live on? Oh, hardly, I would say. But I have a unique talent, Mr. Lewis that uh, affords me uh, steady employment, I might say. That is, three days a week. Oh, that's wonderful. What do you do? I'm a taster for Dr. Ross dog food. <laughs> dog food? I'm the Fido who knows best. <laughs> My name is known in every kennel from coast to coast, Mr. Lewis. They call me the canine Duncan Hyde. <laughs> oh, a dog food taster, that is unique. Well, it's a talent that I acquired uh, during a dull season of layoffs in New York some years ago. There was a, uh, things were bad, and I knew a talking dog. And he invited me over to dinner one night, and I sort of got the... <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Allen. 
Now, as regards the Lucky Strike program, I've no doubt that you're very well qualified. Yeah. But I must face the facts that in Benny, we have a double asset. You see, he's not only a comedian, but he also plays a musical instrument. Plays? Aren't we using the word rather loosely, Mr. <laughs> Rather, let us say, Mr. Benny has an instrument. But if it's music you want, Mr. Lewis, I have come here prepared, sir. I, uh, uh you won't know your, you, you're sure you like music, of oh, course. Love music. Well, you won't know your office from Carnegie Hall in just two seconds here. Are you prepared? <laughs> qualifications. Now, if you will uh, guarantee to, to drop Benny's option and make me the star of the show, I will not only do a better job for Lucky Strike, but I will give you a program with no loose ends. <laughs> oh, you, you said no loose ends, loose the ends. secret words. The secret words. The secret words and the hundred dollars is yours. <laughs> Does Groucho know about this, does he? <laughs> Groucho installed it for me. Oh, I see. Well, <laughs> tell me when to uh, when do I start to work, Mr. Lewis? Well, I'm very grateful for your offer, Mr. Allen, but you must give me a few days to think it over. Yes, sir. You see, I have an appointment with Mr. Benny regarding his option, yes. but I'll do my best to stall him off. Well, that's certainly fair enough. And I tell you, if you should decide to favor me, will you please call me before 9 o'clock in the morning? It's so embarrassing being pulled out of line down at the unemployment office. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Lewis. Goodbye, Mr. Allen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming by. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Allen? It's Benny. He's outside there. He can't see me in here. I'll hide in the closet. No, 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 not in that closet. Uh, go in that one there. Oh, what's the one over there? That's right. Say, I may be in here for some time. Have you, uh... Have you got a light? Oh, why, yes, sir. I'm ready to work for the company. I'm smoking the cigarettes already. Just <laughs> <laughs> There we are. Yes, I am. <coughs> Miss Rockford, you may send Mr. Benny in now. Yes, Mr. Lewis. Oh, Mr. Benny, you may go in now. Oh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Well, well, hello, Mr. Lewis. Hello, Jack. Oh, How are you? May I take that? Yes, sit sir. down, sit down. Oh, thank please. you, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, Mr. Lewis, I, you know, I'll never forget the very first year that I ever worked for you. Hmm? You know, when option time came along, I was a nervous wreck. But now, I don't know, it's just a formality. It doesn't bother me at all. I just come in, you sign the contract, and that's that. You know, it's been a wonderful association. Yes, yes it has been. Ben? <laughs> oh, Ben. Ben, yes, yes, it has. It's, uh, and I'm uh, fully convinced that it will continue to be, to be. It's <laughs> been a lot of fun working for you, Mr. Lewis, and uh, you've been a wonderful sponsor. And after all, where else can you find a comedian as funny as I am? <laughs> now, Mr. Lewis, uh, Mr. Lewis, I do think that... I have the options you wanted to sign today. Oh, the options. Yes, good, yes, good, yes, good. Yes. that's splendid. The options. <laughs> uh, now, uh, what is the, the first one? The uh, first one? The, the, the hit parade. The hit parade. Uh, Ann Southern. Uh, there's Ann Southern's option. That's Robert right. Montgomery. Robert Montgomery. Now, you'll see these are put in the mail, you, so that they can mail. be countersigned. Yeah, but where's mine? Look, yes, look, 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 well, I know, but where, Jack, where's uh, my well, option? I, look at But my option, my option, look at I came up here to sign an option. I mean, I mean, let's get this over with, Mr. Lewis. Let's have no loose ends. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lewis, I said, let's have no loose ends. Jack, what are you looking for? You know what I'm looking for. Groucho told me. <laughs> where, where, where's my contract? I came up here to sign a contract. Now, where is it? My desk alone. What do you mean? But it should be in the... <laughs> Mr. Lewis, what is my contract doing in the wastebasket? <laughs> 
It, it must have blown off my desk. You see, when the window's open, there's a strong wind from the northeast. That's funny. Last year, it was from the southwest. <laughs> Look at Mr. 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 Lewis. Now, why beat around the bush? I mean, everything we say here is we're pride. We're in here alone. I mean, there's nobody else in here but us. Uh, Jack, regretting your option. What? I, I, I mean, regarding your option. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. must have a little time to think it over. But I can't understand why you're hesitating, Mr. Lewis. I mean, I don't know. Something tells me that you must have someone else in mind. And I don't know. I, I don't know why you, you keep doing that to me. After all, I, I've been with the American Tobacco Company for a long time, and I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be. That's true. You were 39 when you joined us. That's right. And I've done a great job all these years, Mr. Lewis, for the American Tobacco Company. I don't know. I've, I've worked hard. We've had wonderful shows. And I, I've, so, I've sold the product. And twice I, 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 I let you exercise the, uh, the, the tobacco picking clause. We didn't exercise it. You held us to it. <laughs> well, I, I still can't understand why you're doing it. There, there's some reason why you're stalling. Jack, you're taking the wrong attitude. I haven't come to any decision about dropping your option. It's just that I, that I, I, want, I want to think it over for a while, just for, say, four or five days. Hmm. Well, all right, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, four, four or five days. Yeah, that's right, Jack. Now, where can I get in touch with you? Well, just call your secretary. I'll be sitting in the outer office. <laughs> Don't forget now. Don't forget. Oh, Check that's the wrong. <laughs> Fred. Fred Allen, what are you doing in that closet? Believe it or not, I'm playing post office. <laughs> post office? Kiss me. <laughs> but Mr. Lewis, there's something fishy going on here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. What's Fred Allen been telling you? Uh, Jack, there's no need to get excited. You know the entertainment business is very competitive. Oh, so it's competitive, huh? So that's it. Fred Allen, you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself coming in here and trying to get my job away from me. Well, gee, Jack, I had to do something. I've eaten so much of that dog food, they've written a song about me being in a window. <laughs> Well, I still say you ought to be ashamed of you. Well, I guess I am a heel, Jack. But always remember, next to a, to a heel, you always find a good soul. And I'm quoting from that famous poet, Tom McCann. <laughs> Fred, after that awful joke, I shouldn't forgive you, but I will, because I know you didn't mean it. Well, okay, Fred, now listen, let's forget all about it. We'll go out and have a cup of coffee. Don't forget to send for me. Huh, Mr. Lewis? Oh, no, okay. yes, yes. I thought they'd never leave. <laughs> Now that they've gone, let's talk business. What do you want with Fred Allen? What do you want with Jack Benny? With me, you've got a young man who can sing, who can dance, who claps his hands, rolls his eyes, and I'm so friendly. Mr. Lewis, you'd never <laughs> regret it. Just a moment, but first, a word from Dorothy Collins. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Naturally, we were only kidding about my sponsor not picking up my option because I am signed with the American Tobacco Company until I am 40. <laughs> they didn't know what they were getting into. <laughs> oh, Fred, Fred Allen, come on out here, will you, Fred? <laughs> Fred, it's really been nice having you on the show, and you were wonderful. Well, right? Jack, you won't believe this, but I tried to louse the whole thing up. <laughs> I believe it. I believe uh, it. But, Fred, let me ask him, is there any truth to that about eating the dog food? Oh, yes, three times a day I have it. Does. <laughs> well, doesn't it upset your stomach? Well, no, it doesn't bother my stomach, Jack, but eating out of the bowl is hard on my knees. <laughs> 
see. <laughs> oh, Eddie, Eddie Tanner, come on out. Eddie, I want to tell you it was just wonderful you to come in here just to do this one little bit on the show. Right? Jack, I want to tell you it was my pleasure. No, 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 Eddie, it was my pleasure. Believe me, Jack, it was my pleasure. Eddie, ladies, believe and, me, it's my. Ladies pleasure. and gentlemen, this shows you what happens when two straight men get together. <laughs> What'd you say, Fido? What? <laughs> Come on, give me my red hot and let me get out of here. <laughs> No, listen, I'll tell you what. You fellas have been such good sports. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite you both to my house to dinner tonight, and I want you to bring your wives. Oh, that's How about nice. Well, I'd Jack, rather... Jack, uh, I've never been to your house. How do you get there? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, look, at you go two blocks... You're from... covering me. Oh, You're covering oh, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> you go, Eddie, uh, Fred. You're Eddie. My name is Sam. No, this is Fred. <laughs> This is Fido. Look no, at Jack, Fred. Fred. Look, I, look, at, look, at, look at You go two... You want to know how to get to my house? Yeah. Now, you go two blocks to your right yeah. till you come to the California Bank, California you see. Bank. Then you go four blocks to your left till you come to the Bank of America, Bank you of see. America. Then seven more blocks to the right till you come to the Citizens National Citizens Bank, Bank, you see. Bank. Then you keep going 